Most people think a pretty dashboard or something unnecessarily super complex is what makes a good data analysis project, where in reality 99.9% .9 of the people who come to me for mentorship sessions, help on projects and portfolios do not do this. Build a project that tackles real life problems and solves that. So this is exactly what I will show you today through RFM analysis, which stands for recency, frequency and monetary. I am going to be using Microsoft Excel to do my data analysis, but there's a link to the data set in the description below. So feel free to grab the data set and do the analysis in whatever tool you prefer. Tooling really does not matter here. I chose a spreadsheet because it's accessible and familiar to most of you. Your ability to solve a business problem, now that is what matters. The business problems I will answer today using RFM analysis, who are my best customers, who needs a retention campaign, and which segments are safe to ignore. And just a super quick note before jumping into the project, I recently started a community where I teach similar concepts and projects, arguably way more complex and difficult than what I'm about to show you in this video. So once you're done watching this video and you completed your analysis, feel free to check out Data Analysis Lab as well using my link in the description below. Initially, I wasn't going to include how I created my data set, but here it goes for the people who want to generate data sets quickly. So all I did was I wrote a prompt for this specific analysis, RFM analysis, and then I used perplexity, and then I just prompted perplexity to give me the Python code for this specific analysis. And then I used the Python code to generate a CSV file into my local directory that I opened up in Visual Studio Code right here. So now it's asking me whether or not I would like the Python code. So I'll just say, give me the Python code. And then perplexity will just generate the Python code for me. And then this is the Python code I used in Visual Studio Code, which is my preferred IDE when writing Python code. You can see right here, this is the code. I ran this code and just pay attention to this line here, print shop orders.csv. This is the file I wrote into my local directory. You can see that it's right here, print shop orders.csv. And um, here's the file. So this is how I generated my data set. Now, what I'm going to do is use this data set, open it up in Microsoft Excel. And yes, I am using Excel right now on a Mac, but it won't make too much of a difference. Actually, it won't make any difference for this specific project. I do prefer using Excel on my Windows, but today I just had my Mac open. So let me save this file as an Excel file first. So I'll call it print shop orders one. And this is going to be the file that we'll be working on. Let me zoom in a little bit. Let me auto adjust all of the column widths. And first things first, let me change the order date from custom to, oh, not long date, but to short date, because I think it's just all we need. So really simple data set, order ID, customer ID, order date, product type, and order value for a print shop, my print shop. And the first thing I'll do is insert a pivot table. So I'll call the sheet pivot one, you can call it whatever you like. So I'll drop the customer ID onto the rows. And then first of all, I need to get the recency score. So recency means when was the last time the customer purchased with me. So to get that, I grab the order date. And instead of count, I will go to field settings, and I would like the max value. And then again, I need to change the number formatting to date so that I can actually see the last date that specific customer purchased with me. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And then you can see that customer 0001 purchased last time with me on the 30th of September 2025. Customer 0002 purchased with me last time on the 30th of October 2025. Now the next thing I want to get, so this is going to be for our recency calculation. The next thing I need to get is uh, frequency. Frequency is just how many times did that customer purchase with me already. And then we move to monetary, which is how much money did that customer spend with me. Frequency is easy, grab the order ID, drop it onto the values, and then you can see the count. So customer 
one purchased five times with me already, and then the order value onto the values, and the sum of order values is going to be the total amount of money that specific customer spent with me. So again, if I take customer 001, last time this customer purchased was on the 30th of September, this customer made five purchases with me already, and for a total amount of 64.5 US dollars or whatever currency you prefer, depending on your location. So now the next thing I will do is I would like to clean this up a little bit. So I will copy and paste this information onto a different sheet, but I'll need the customer ID column and then I'll need recency, frequency, and monetary values. So customer ID, I will just say is equal to cell A4, and then recency will be today. So I'll use the today function as in it'll give me today's date and I will take away cell B4 and this will give me a number. So 32.65. Essentially, this was how long ago this customer purchased with me. So I'll make this into one that's actually I'll just make it a whole number. And then frequency is just going to be equal to cell C4 and then monetary is going to be cell D4. All right, so I have all of these values now. I'm going to select them like this and then go to the plus icon and then double click. And now I have all of my values populated. And to double check the formulas, you could click into any of the recency cells. And then if you use, if you're on a Mac, the function key Fn and F2, if you're on Windows, you just press F2 and then you can go into the function and you can see that I'm referencing the right cell here. So if I look at row one here, Customer 001 purchased 33 days ago from me. This customer made five purchases already. And then you have the monetary value totaling 64.5 US dollars. Okay, what I will do now is copy and paste the values only. So I'll go to my customer ID cell, hold down shift and control or command, hit the right arrow key and then down, and then press control C go to a new sheet, and then you can just paste values and number formatting. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Let me zoom in. And then let me go to the bottom and I won't need any of the grand totals. So you can just go to clear and clear all. I'm holding down command or control and then pressing the up arrow and then I'm back at the top of my worksheet. So we'll need an R score. We'll need an F score and then we'll need an M score. I'm gonna split all of these customers into five different categories. So one, two, three, four, five, where five is the best and one is the worst. And then I'm gonna assign a total RFM score. And then I'm gonna give them an RFM category based on that score. That's all that's gonna happen. And then we're gonna have a count at the end, how many customers we have in each RFM category to answer the three business questions we had that I stated in the beginning of the video. Okay, so R score. So I already have the R score written out because I didn't want you to watch me type out a long ifs formula, but this is the formula right here. What I'm doing is using the percentile include function and I'm splitting my data set every 20th percentile. So. I'm splitting my data, my customers into quintiles. And you can see here that the best customers will have a value of five for recency and the worst will have a value of one. All right, let me hit enter. And then you can come here, hit the plus icon twice, and then you have the values. So if I interpret this, let me pick someone who's a one here. Customer 16 is a one. This customer purchased 178 days ago. So it's one of my worst customers in terms of recency. But let's say if I pick someone with five, this customer, customer 0002 purchased three days ago. So this customer will have a R score of five. F score, I already have the formula for this as well. It's the same formula, ifs formula. And there we go. Again, I'm splitting my customers into quintiles, five being the best, one being the worst. And then let me just double click right here. And then you can see, let me pick a five and a one again. So this customer right here, customer 0028 
purchased once. So that means this customer bought with me once and then never again. Since that first purchase, this customer just didn't make a purchase. So this customer has a frequency score of one, but this customer, for example, customer 0001, purchased five times already. So it's one of my best customers in terms of frequency. Let me do the same for the monetary value. So this is the total amount of money the customers spent with me. And it'll be the same logic. I'm splitting my customers into five quintiles. So every 20th percentile, five will be for my best customers in terms of money spent. And then one is the worst. Double click on the plus icon and then let me pick a one. So this customer right here spent 16 Point sixty-six dollars with me, whereas this customer spent 123 bucks with me. So one of my best customers right here, customer 0004, and one of my worst customers here, customer 0024. Now I'll do a combined RFM score. So it's just going to be R score plus the F score plus the M score. You can double click on the plus sign again. So 15 is the maximum value that you can have here. And then three would be the minimum because one plus one plus one is equal to three. So you cannot be lower than that. And then based on the RFM score, I'm going to assign my customers a category. Here we go. So I'm using again the ifs function. And then you can see that if the score is greater than or equal to 13 best customers, if it's greater than or equal to 10 loyal customers, greater than or equal to seven potential loyal customers. If it's greater than or equal to four, then these customers need attention. Otherwise, the customers will be at risk. So let me double click again. Here we go. And you can see that now I have specific RFM categories assigned to my customers based on their RFM score. So I can insert another pivot table based on this table. Here we go. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, now I can grab the RFM category right here. So we have these categories and then I can just grab the count of the customer IDs. So you can see that right now we have 13 customers at risk. 61 are actually my best customers. Um, I have 75 loyal customers, I have 57 who need attention, and then I have 81 who are potential loyal customers. So just to go back to the business questions that we had, so these were the business questions. Who are my best customers? So my best customers, there you go, are these customers. I have 61 customers who, based on the RFM score, are the best customers. Who needs a retention campaign? Um, I would say these customers would definitely need a retention campaign. 57 need attention, 13 at risk, and then which segments are safe to ignore? Maybe the at-risk customers, maybe these 13 we could ignore as well. I'll let you dive deeper down into the analysis. All of the links to all of the files will be in the description below, including the code I used to generate my data set. And then I will give you this Excel file as well, which is going to include the clean data set right here. And then you can do the analysis for yourself. Don't forget the link to the data set and the entire Excel workbook are in the description below. If you found the video useful, like and subscribe for more content like this. And if you're serious about getting into data analytics, I would highly recommend you check out the Data Analysis Lab community using my link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one.